Hello, I am Kimberly Adams. Welcome back to Make Me Smart, where we make today make sense and hopefully the week as well. It is Friday, June the 16th. Kai is out today, but joining me is the wonderful plant magical pottery excellence person, Sabri Benishore. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Kimberly. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Good to be back on economics. Uh, get, good to be back for economics on tap. That's lovely. I and, love the uh, drapery behind you, by the way. It's all the, the drapery. <laughs> the drapery is to conceal the abject chaos and despair <laughs> that is like, do you know, you know what this is? Do you know what this is? Uh, this? Mosquito netting. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's mosquito netting because because that's how I'm living right now, because we have a mosquito problem in my bedroom from all the plants, I think. And so okay. now I sleep with a mosquito net, you know. So you have to get one of those plants that like eats bugs, the, um, yep. not, not like the Venus flytrap one, but the sticky one, the one with the sticky arms. Mm, I don't sundew. know what it's called. Yeah, you should totally do yes, that. Yes, sundew. Get yeah. a sundew. There you go. All right. Uh, so we have the YouTube live stream up and running. We've got drinks. We've got news. And we're going to end with a game. But first, um, before we dive into the news, I want to talk drinks. But if anybody mm -hmm. read the newsletter to the end, which you should, you should subscribe, subscribe to the Make Me Smart newsletter, you will know what Sabri is drinking and perhaps be as disturbed by it as I am, why don't you tell the people what you have done? <laughs> well, on the advice of my friend Lloyd, I have made a <laughs> smoothie, which contains uh, frozen fruit and whey protein and nuts and seeds um, and some frozen chicken and some... Um, there, and the frozen protein. chicken yeah. in the fruit smoothie. Just, just want to go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. So listen, I know it sounds gross, um, but if you just put a little in, then you can't taste it. And it's a good source of protein. However, there it does quickly reach a critical mass of of chicken cubes. They're boiled, <clears throat> boiled and then frozen. It does reach a critical mass where it and it's, it happens very quickly where it tastes revolting. I mean, I <laughs> like I, I, I actually gagged one time because it was like strawberries with like that you know that that back taste of chicken that kind of haunting aftertaste of like not good chicken that's that's what it was and but but if you don't get that far it's good it tastes great i recommend it does food bring you any joy <laughs> like do you do you get pleasure from eating or drinking things at all or is it just like oh. sustenance for you it's so sad i used to get pleasure from food but now it's truly just sustenance it's really it's just like <laughs> slurry it's just it's just like soylent green what what about you what are you drinking i'm sure it's going to be more fun <laughs> yeah way more fun so i am drinking a rosemary's remedy uh and for those who want the ingredients and all uh it's in the you it's in the make me smart newsletter um but basically it's got rosemary simple syrup campari a rosemary blueberry shrub and rye whiskey because you have such oh, amazing and drink rosemary recipes. from every my time, garden oh my gosh every time i have been to your place you've just sort of like presto magic mm, some nice. phantasmagorical uh some some amazing drink with 72 ingredients that you just like whip up like that it's, it's really everyone impressive. has their hobbies <laughs> mm. i like it it is tasty all right i know we've probably lost it in the YouTube live chat, but everybody say it again, what you're drinking. Um, let's see. An Am uh, Tamara Haynes is drinking an Amber from Finkel and Garf Brewery in Boulder, Colorado. Debbie Donovan mm. has a good earth, sweet and spicy tea iced in her massive Yeti mug. Uh, Abby is do doing a Diet Dr. Pepper. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer's having a painkiller. Chuck is having a Sazerac cocktail with genuine Sazerac rye. I do love a good Sazerac. Cynthia with mm -hmm. her peach, lime, and gin cocktail. If gin were not the devil to me, that would sound so <laughs> interesting. But I do not, I don't mess with gin at all. Uh, all right. And Bailey has the cranberry juice and soda sans chicken cubes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people piece. are ever going to forgive you for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sabri, yeah. what's your news? 
Okay, so there are two uh, two articles, uh, like two things, kind of housing related, well, or building occupancy related. Um, one is in uh, Bloomberg. the The headline is "NYC's rent surge defied by new grads pursuing a TikTok lifestyle," and so it goes on to sort of describe how younger people, new arrivals to the city, are stretching themselves through all manner of side hustles and side jobs and main jobs and um, trying to make ends meet to live this fashionable TikTok New York sex in the city type lifestyle. Um, I mean, mm. it does glamorize it a bit, uh, but I think it's just kind of the city is so expensive and you have to really get creative to to live here. Certainly if you're a new, you know, if you're just trying to get your foothold in the city as a new new mm -hmm. person. It's really hard. I mean, people, you know, have roommates. I still have roommates. I mean, I'm also super cheap, but I, I still, <laughs> you know, have roommates. So um, I mean, this anyway, article is amazing I, I because like it talks about this woman who's a TikToker and who is in beauty marketing and lives in a penthouse apartment overlooking the Brooklyn Bridge, lazy weekend shopping crazy. in Soho and dinner parties. And then it says, what you don't see online is what it takes to make that lifestyle reality. She has four roommates, works 10 hours a day, has side hustles and used $1,500 of the 20000 she saved up working full time in college to move into the apartment and i'll bet she probably has family help too because they usually yeah. do yeah that, that that's like the standout line from the whole story yeah um yeah so i, I don't then, know why we live here yeah. the other you one know was exactly why you live there the parties <laughs> yeah. the parties are pretty epic <laughs> It's true. Um, yeah, the I lived in one New York just, when I was oh, sorry, like 19. I lived in New York oh, when I was really? like 19 and I partied so much with my sister. Oh, uh, oh. oh I, I was 21. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I recall that as well. You were yes, I, I, I was wrong about the, the age there. <laughs> anyway, I had a great time partying, but I think yeah. I like partied myself out and now I just... I'm, I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. I also partied yeah. a whole lot when I was living in Egypt. Like, I'm, now oh, I'm yeah. just going to sit at home and work in my garden. Anyway, what's yeah. your other article? Well, the other one was, uh, let's see, workers want to stay remote, prompting an office real estate crisis. This is in the Washington Post. And basically, it just points out that um, a lot of s several high profile building owners have just stopped re paying their loans and banks have repossessed <laughs> some major buildings um, because there's, you know, as a uh, commercial tenants, as their leases expire, they're not renewing them because they don't need the office. So right. you just have these vacancies. And this is something like we talked about from the very beginning. I remember, mm -hmm. you know, of the pandemic, like, how is this going to pan out in commercial real estate? And it is kind of, it's, it's coming. It's, it's here. Um, so the question is, how significant will this be to, for example, the banking system? And it sounds like everyone knows that it's coming and is trying to prepare, but it doesn't exactly say how they're preparing other than just accepting a lower return on whatever investment they made in the building or loans that were taken out to finance it or whatever. So I, I don't know. It's something that I would like to learn more about. I wonder, though, if like all of these landlords who suddenly i mean especially for like these people who bought apartment buildings like especially um venture capitalists and sort of these people who bought shares in apartment complexes and all of these sort of people who thought this was a way to get rich quick to become a landlord and buy property for cash mm -hmm. and then rent it out uh, or to buy the property with these adjustable rate mortgages and, and become landlords. I wonder if as they lose these properties, will rents actually go down? Will homes start to become available for people who actually wanna live in them as opposed to sort of corporations and venture capitalists and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's no small feat to transform the commercial, a commercial building into like a residential building. Huge. And so far, I think it's only kind of been worth it to convert to like super high end apartments, which doesn't really help anyone. It, well, it doesn't really <laughs> help anyone. Um, no. So, um, yeah, but I, I mean, 
gosh, it's like connecting back to the first story, if you know, we could see a surge of of residential housing come onto the market. Gosh, that would make so many people's lives less, you know, tenuous financially. Yeah, for sure. Um, anyway, what so is, what's your mine story? is also like housing slash residential related. It's actually an editorial mm. in the Washington Post, kind of. uh, encapsulating some coverage that's been going on for a very hyper local story in DC, but that's very interesting for sort of how we live in this country. So there's this like swanky neighborhood in DC called Cleveland Park and people tend to be like wealthier if you live there. And Mm -hmm. there was a resident in an apartment building who was so annoyed and just frustrated about her neighbor smoking weed and the smell just permeating her apartment. And she sent like Mm -hmm. 200 emails over the course of, I guess, a couple of Uh years to ask her neighbor to stop smoking so much because it was making her ill and she was so upset. But weed, smoking weed in your house in DC is legal. It's not illegal. And so Mm. at first, so she ended up suing uh, the landlord and her neighbor. And it initially was dismissed because it's like, it's legal. He's in his own home. You can't really stop somebody from doing it. But Mm. then on appeal, she won because they were like, your right to smoke in your house doesn't supersede somebody's right to like exist and live comfortably (laughs) in their own home. Yeah, And, you know, it's, it's so f- interesting because like DC has had all these like back and forth over what you can and cannot do with weed, but more mm-hmm. and more places across the country are legalizing weed and expanding the rules for it. It's got a very potent smell. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I, it, I wonder if this is going to end up becoming precedent uh, for other cases as this starts to become more common. And, you know, it's, it's, so you can't smoke like in public in DC, but then mm-hmm. if you can't smoke inside, what do you do? It does that act. Is it actually still legal? So what the, the solution to this is weed vape pens because they don't mm. smell uh, truly. I mean, cause I, this is so funny because I have this exact similar issue. Like there's this dude, this neighbor that, you know, love him, great guy, but you know, comes by, to the patio ne- near my window to smoke every single day and like write in his journal or whatever. And it smells so bad. It's so foul. Like <clears throat> it's not even a good weed smell though. It's like, it's like nasty, cheap, gross weed. And I'm just like, get a vape, just get a vape. <laughs> but some people like the smoke. I mean, this is similar to people who yeah. like smoking cigarettes. Some people That's like true. the feeling of the smoke. Um, but anyway, it's a very interesting article. It's a very interesting thing. We are going way on too long. We need to move on to our oh, game. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, right. wait, wait. Yes. But before we do that, before that, mm-hmm. so we mm-hmm. have to go to a break first. But before we do it, we do have some other news to share because we are so close to the end of our fiscal year and we really need everybody's help to meet our fundraising goals because as anybody who's read the news knows, it's a tough time in our industry at this particular moment. But we... <laughs> <laughs> Sabri, how many people do you know who've been laid off in the last couple months? I know at least six. Yeah, I think I know three. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's bad out here. But we are very fortunate because a longtime Marketplace listener and donor, Dr. Joe Rush, has offered to match the next $50,000 in donations. So first of all, thanks, Dr. Rush. We appreciate it. But if you all can join Joe in supporting Marketplace before our budget year comes to an end at the end of June, we would really appreciate it. We still have a little ways to go in order to balance our budget for the year. It has been tough. So if we can make the most of this match, we would be in much better shape. You can give now and double your impact. You can go to marketplace.org slash give smart. And there's going to be a link in the show notes. We'd really appreciate it if you are able. And as always, we really appreciate your support. So thank you. And we will be right back. Jasper is so fascinated by you. Like he came and sat down like as soon as you came. Can you see him? Oh, He's like staring oh, right I at you. <laughs> oh, thank you. 
All right, so today we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of half full, half empty, we're going to play this or that. Drew is going to give us two related objects or ideas, and we are going to choose between them. And as usual, we are going to ask you all to join us for a poll at the end. So, Drew, let us go. All right, are you a text person or a calling person? Oh, God, a text like person. <laughs> you look like oh. you have real strong feelings about this. <laughs> oh, yes. No, like, why Why would you call? I don't, it takes so much time to listen to someone talk and just, you can just read it. You know what the worst stuff is, is the mm. audio messages. Like, I do oh, not, God, I do not yes. have five minutes to sit and listen to this. I, to, I don't, so I know. Much. So no, text all the way, all the way, all the way. I, uh, when I get some of those messages, I'll often respond with like, I don't have the, uh, I can't listen to this right now. Is it urgent? <laughs> you know, text me if it's <laughs> yeah. urgent, you know, because I'm like, yeah. I'm not in a place to listen to this right now. Because unless you have headphones, what am I going to do? Like listen to it on the Metro. Um, mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, don't love the audio memos, which is funny because we work in audio we're recording stuff all the time. It's I go. True. So text is my answer, but I will say I'm at the two extremes. So I like to text most people for efficiency, but then there are a couple of people who I will sit on the phone with for hours talking about absolutely nothing. Sure. I mean, sure. my sister, my best friend back in St. <laughs> Louis, on the phone for like hours at a time, just sort of washing dishes and narrating. <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> complaining about yeah. housework. <laughs> like my friend is constantly yeah. talking about how she needs like a garden butler to so she doesn't have to water her own plants. And I'm like, I need to <laughs> just butler, you know, like the things we wish we had. Anyway, yeah. so short answer, text, except for when I want to just like wax poetically for hours on the phone. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm on board. OK, are you a dine in person or take out person? Dine in for sure. If I'm paying the money, I want to eat in the fancy place. Mm -hmm. I want the experience. Yeah, I spend enough time at at home. I don't. I don't. I don't need to do more things here. Uh, yeah, I want to be out. Let me out. Also, I feel like we spent so much. We those of us who are fortunate enough to be able to work from home during the pandemic, the worst of the pandemic, I should say, we spent so much time at home that now we're just like we don't need to eat in. We don't need to like mm -mm. carry out. We need to eat out. Paragliding or parasailing? Okay, some context for this. So when I was in Seattle last week for our live show, after the show, the next day, I was supposed to go paragliding off a of Tiger Mountain because like, it, you know, I was in Seattle and supposedly this is like one of the best places to go paragliding in the country. And so I got there with Marissa Cabrera, who is our wonderful producer of Make Me Smart. And we like badgered her to convince her to go paragliding also. And we finally convinced her to go. We go up the mountain surrounded by clouds, dense, like soupy clouds, can't go mm. paragliding. So mm. came back down the mountain. We did, however, Marissa and I, ride these like they were basically like picnic tables with wheels strapped on the side and we you like sat on them and in a very dangerous way just like rolled <laughs> them down this extra steep hill into like this bank of bushes and hopefully didn't injure yourself it was quite fun oh, so anyway fun. i have been parasailing i have not been paragliding so i'm gonna say parasailing because it was super fun what about you what what is the difference between them Parasailing is over water where a boat is like pulling you behind and oh. paragliding is just like you walk off of the side of a mountain hope for the best. Oh, uh, the wa the mountain one. The mountain okay. one. Okay, parasail yeah. paragliding. I feel like there's more more to see. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Mm. All right. Yeah. What's next? All right, <laughs> would you prefer a smoothie or a cold pressed juice? <laughs> After hearing Sabri's smoothie, cold pressed juice for sure. <laughs> I will do a smoothie because it has more protein in it. It's, Soylent is Soylent summer. Green is made of people. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more. Okay, so we need a poll. Do we have a poll this time? I didn't even ask. Uh, let's see. What does everybody say? 
I don't know. Yes, we have a poll. Okay, let's do it. All right. Here's a poll question. Do you prefer a paper book or an e-reader? Mm. We're going to wait, Sabri, so you can talk mm. about your feelings about both topics while we wait for everyone to vote. Okay. Go ahead. Do you have strong feelings or thoughts about paper books, paper books versus e-readers? No, I, I, <laughs> I have never, I've never used an e-reader. Oh, and interesting. It, well, actually, I've never used one, and I'll tell you why for books because, um, especially if it's like a nonfiction thing, um, I don't know. At least for me, I can. Sp- spatially orient the location of information within the three dimensions of the book if that makes sense Mm, so i remember this was here this came after that this was further this was the top right corner or this was further into the book and that aspect of um like spatial information helps me remember things and um when it's just in a pdf i i remember things not as well so i you know, PDF or flat screen, you know, digital screen. I don't, I don't remember them as well. I don't think so. Book. Wait, you- I see like um, Jin Peck is saying in the chat, like that they like paper books because you can dog ear them, which I am oh, 100% yeah. a dog ear book kind of person. I was reading Lindy West's book, Shrill, um, in the lead up to the interview with her that we did on, um, Friday, last Friday, and like so many dog years. And I've read a few books digitally. Like I remember when I was living abroad, I, I couldn't get a lot of the books I wanted to read, so I'd read them digitally. But I don't know, it feels like such a luxury to sit down with a physical book <laughs> because like you can't do anything else, you know? Whereas yeah. when I'm listening to my audio books, which is how I consume most books these days, especially because I the fiction books that I like, like sci-fi, fantasy, mm. usually audiobooks. Um, but uh, I think we've done enough of the poll. It's 145 votes. I'm going to say I'm an analog book person. And it sounds like you are too. All right, yeah. let's see the poll results. Yeah. Drum roll, please. No, that didn't go very well. Well, anyway, it's coming out in a second. Mm-hmm. Some of the comments are great. Bunny Hug Geronimo says, who has space for paper? And Rampo <laughs> says, no, no dog ears. Very upset by the dog ears. There's actually- Oh gosh, a, it bothers some people looks like so a debate much. in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Why All hurt right, the books? So... Ask C. Peppa <laughs> It doesn't hurt them. It just, you know, makes them feel loved. All right, so analog yeah. book is 62%. E-reader is 37%, which is a bit more of a divide than we usually end up with. But- Thank you, Mm. everybody, for voting. Um, So that is it for us. Oops, I was supposed to wait for the music. My bad. Second day in a row. Can't get the music right. My bad. (laughs) Anyway, that's it for us today. Uh, We will be out Monday for Juneteenth. Please go do something nice for Black people that day. Back on Tuesday for our weekly (laughs) deep dive. Until then, uh, keep the questions and comments coming. We are at 508UBSmart and at makemesmart at marketplace.org. Make Me Smart is produced by Courtney Bergseeker. Today's episode was engineered by Charlton Thorpe. Drew Jostad wrote the theme music for our Friday game. Yes, and the team behind our Friday game is Emily McCune and Antoinette Brock. Marissa Cabrera is our senior producer and almost paraglider. Uh, Bridget Bodner is the director of podcasts and Francesca Levy is the executive director of digital and on demand. It's so funny. I guess Jasper.